Maria Schur and Maddie Carlson met a few years ago at a bike event in Portland. Ready, ride? I'm ready to sit on a light rail for an hour. <laughs> Train approaches. Every once in a while, they get to do something big. And they do it on their bikes because they don't own cars by choice. We both are car free. We could just ride the whole way, I guess, but in an hour, we'll wake up over in the end of the line and have cut out two hours of riding. They're heading to the coast. Their ride starts at the end of the Max Line in Hillsboro. And while they've both done long rides, including this one, this is their first bikepacking trip together. I was a little worried Maria would be impatient with me because she is a cyclist, whereas I am just like a mom who rides a bike around. Maria and Maddie may have different biking resumes, but they share a passion for biking and living car free. Car left. Getting anywhere on pedal power alone is amazing. But even the harder things that you do in a car, like carrying camping gear and going all the way to the coast when you don't live near the coast, you can do on a bike. Foggy that way, sunny that way. Oh, good. Well, yeah, let's go that way. <laughs> it will take Maria, Maddie, and Pixie two days to bike over the coast range using a route called the Trask. The Trask Trail is actually considered the easiest dirt route to the coast. It turns to gravel approximately 25 miles outside Hillsboro and winds along the Trask River, ending in Tillamook. But it's not flat or smooth. I see gravel. I see a hill. <laughs> yay gravel. I don't know if I can muster a yay hill. The Trask Trail uses active logging roads, so it's safest to ride on weekends when there aren't many logging trucks. Some logging companies actually close their roads to cars on weekends, but allow bikes to pass through. It's bumpy. Want to pull off up there and let tire pressure down? Yes. So having tires fully inflated is good in the city and on pavement, but on gravel, lower tire pressure. Think that's good? Yeah, you're, you're daring. <laughs> so now I'm running the risk of getting a flat tire, but until that happens, I'm gonna be much grippier. And my final adjustment is to lose nine pounds of cargo weight. Okay, Pixie, time to stretch your legs. Being willing to ride off-road and in gravel just opens up a whole world of adventure. Okay, Pixie, build up your momentum. It's remote, there's not a cell phone signal. Um, I know how to fix a flat tire, but I don't know much beyond that. So, you know, you have to trust in your machine, make sure it's tuned up, and um, yeah, anything's walkable if you have enough time, right? There's a ledge here. Okay, oh my. Hold on, Pixie. Mountain biking! <laughs> Yay, lunch. We're like 30 miles in, I wanna say. We're currently at 42 feet, so no big deal. 1,750 feet to climb. And that's the sound of the men ah. working on the chain. Ah. Gang, gang. Singing is definitely a good coping mechanism for me. Okay, Pixie. I'm not a serious cyclist who does big bike rides on purpose for training. I do everything in two mile increments. The trust certainly isn't easy for someone like me, but it's doable. I like how the road just disappears over the horizon here, but somehow it keeps going up. But the views are amazing, even when I'm walking and dripping with sweat and wondering where the top of the hill is and just knowing, uh, especially on the closed to cars portion, like you can't get here unless you're on a bike. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Bicycling is the tool that I use to live life. Just strumming on the old banjo and singing feet by top of the hill. It's my transportation, my exercise, my fun. It's everything to me. I made it to the top of the hill, <laughs> barely. Um, I think this is the summit. 
Oh, yay. I'm looking at the map. This is, is the this top. top. Okay. It feels great. <laughs> Maddie writes a family biking column. Oh, now Although the Trask is on. not a route she'd bring her kids on, it's perfect for her dog, Pixie. Go in. She's 10 and a rescue, so she's most happy staying at home, sitting on a lap. But the next best thing is to be with me out on the bike. Posting's awesome. She likes descending, <laughs> having her ears flap in the wind. Honey! Oh. She's my masthead and direction guide, and she loves it. Oh, is this the turn? Should we stop? Uh, maybe. I think this might be where we go right. Uh, to go right or to go left? That is the question. We're going right. We caught it. Riding all day on a loaded bike is one of the big challenges of the Trask. So the goal is oh, to pack wow. light, but wow. also have everything you need when you roll into camp. It's really fun to get your gear as cute and tiny as possible, and yet still have luxuries and still have comfort. Maria keeps her load around 35 pounds, but there is always room for a little flair. Really important category is the luxury. You're gonna be out in the woods for a weekend or a week? Bring your favorite candy. Put a disco ball in your tent. Bring an extra little pillow to sit on. Pixie's my luxury item, I guess. <laughs> I know we're starting the day with a giant downhill. My intuition when I'm scared is to like really be on the brakes, but that's actually more dangerous. So you've got to like coach yourself and be like, relax and just feather and release. Oh. Lot of me. The Trask River Sugary. road gravel, this weekend anyway, plush. But any second it can change. Loose. I'm going to walk through this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Traveling at bike speed, it's going to be about 15 miles an hour, and I'm going to smell everything, hear everything, see everything. Look at this. Yeah, this is the stuff. It simplifies everything. I do so much thinking on the bike. I think something with the motion of the pedals and the wind in my ears. And the air is just, it feels medicinal to the lungs. And here you are in the canopy and it's so beautiful. And then you come around a bend and there's a wall of earth across a giant ravine with tens of thousands of trees and it's moving, you know. Wow! Look at this! So it's designed for us. Oh. Whee! Wow. It's like I have a brand new foot. By the rivers and the sea. How I miss my friend the pavement. And I bet it misses me. Oh, pavement. <laughs> the initial feeling is wee! It's smooth. We can just coast all the way. We both forgot how hilly it is on the way to Tillamook. Ooh, uphill into the wind. Now we're facing into a headwind, and the biggest dark cloud would be now we're with the cars. Up another one. There's no perfect route that's going to be free of cars and flat to get to the coast, whether it's paved or gravel. Ah. Home stretch. The official Trask Trail ends in Tillamook, but Maria and Maddie want to make it to the beach. It's just a few miles away, but there's no safe bikeable route. And bike lane is gone. I don't have positive thoughts in my head anymore. There's one car back. I'm just getting a creeping sensation that here come 30 cars and I only really need one of them to be texting. Yeah, I want to take a break. You do want to take a break? Yeah. Right now? Yes, please. Okay, slow in. Here's a tiny bit of shade. It's all cars from here on out. Just, I, I was scared. I was scared for my life. And here's a van with a bike rack. You're my hero! Maria jumped in the van with a field guide crew and bypassed the scariest mile while Maddie took her chances and continued by bike. I didn't feel unsafe. A car had passed us too closely. I knew that might happen again, and I knew the, the road coming up, there was a hill without a shoulder. 
Also knowing the beach was so close and I had just conquered that big gravel hill, I think buoyed me a little bit. Wow, Pix. I see the ocean. Maria rejoined Maddie and Pixie for their final push to Cape Lookout Campground to complete their 77-mile ride to the ocean. I see the sign. I don't get to see it very often. If I see the ocean, it's probably because I rode my bike there. We made it. I got here on my own steam. When we, like, saw the beach and got there, I almost started crying and I was trying to hold it back and just knowing it was so many miles from home and having reached there, a little bit of light rail travel, but mostly pedaling to get there is, is an amazing feeling. You don't feel in everyday life.